Munson with Munson Music and we're going to talk about how you play a song called Rock That Rock by R5. And we end up cabling this on 4th fret to kind of match the recording. We'll walk through a couple things in reposition. And it starts out with and, and this kind of this faint intro actually that kind of is really kind of around our chorus. And we start on a C major chord. Normally you do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second fret, third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you show them the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also dig on lifting off the first finger and making that a C major 7. We're adding in the pinky on the B string 3rd and kind of making that a C major 9 and kind of saying some stuff around that chord. And then from the C we'd be going to an F major chord. I'll talk about a really easy way to play this. But normally you do this as a 1st fret bar, 2nd finger on the G 2nd, 3rd finger on the A 3rd, pinky on the D 3rd. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an F major bar chord, and it sounds really, really happy. Now, a good substitute for that if you're just starting out is an F major second, where you do first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the G second fret, and third finger on the D third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, it sounds an like F major seven. It sounds really groovy and happy. And then from the F, we'd be going to an A minor chord. I normally do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second, and then third finger on the G second. And if you strum all those together, it sounds an A minor chord and it sounds really sad. Now you may also dig on lifting off the first finger, making it an A sus2. Or adding in the pinky on the B string third from the A sus, <laughs> kind of saying some stuff around the A minor. Or you may even dig on lifting off the third finger, making it an A minor 7. Or adding in the pinky on the high E third for an A minor 7. And from the A minor, we'd be going to a G major chord. Normally you do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the low E third, third finger on the high E third. You strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also dig on putting third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, and kind of working that for the G major. And randomly, if you if you dig on that, that particular shape for the G major, on the C, you may want to think about using a C major nine, doing first finger on the D second, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, and that can kind of help go to an F major 13. And just move in first finger and second finger to the G string and the D string. And then for the A, you could use an A7 sus. Doing first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger still on the B third, pinky on the high E. And then from there, you could kind of work that to that G major. So it might be kind of cool because you can just leave third and fourth fingers down, almost like a little anchor, like through that whole progression, kind of C, A, A minor. it's really all about this kind of punch almost kind of like two downs and you may want to do downs or you could even kind of do down and kind of kill the strings to kind of punctuate it F A minor G or on the intro actually it's really ambient and it's kind of this little keyboard idea and what you may want to do is some things called arpeggios and what an arpeggio is is, is it means just broken chords so you can take the C chord for instance and play individual notes of that chord I, I, just kind of throwing that out here. It's kind of a free form idea. C, F, A minor, G. Just kind of trying to kind of find some individual notes that might be kind of cool through that part. That kind of an idea. Or you could use a strum pattern. And there are a couple different strum patterns you may want to play around with. You could do kind of a down idea. And it is a fast-paced tune, so you could think almost kind of a, an eight down count through the tune. Kind of C, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, F, A minor, G. Or if that seems incredibly fast, you can do one, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, G, two, three, four. Or you could use a strum pattern. One of my favorite strum patterns for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So you took the C and just tried that a lot. You have down, down, up, down, 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 Downups can really work with that. Kind of C up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. A minor down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, G. So there might be some spots where you're just kind of feeling, oh man, I gotta build up a 
lot of energy and damage to kind of work for that. A minor G. And from that intro, then we'll be going into our, our first verse. And our verse kind of mixes up a couple of things we've been talking about. So you start on the C. strings and kind of wait before you come in on our chorus progression. It's actually that same thing as the intro. And the weird thing about the chorus, actually, you kind of hear this happen on the solos too, is we kind of have, have almost like a vamp on a C chord at the very end. So we do that four times, and then you may want to just stay on the C chord and kind of vamp on the C chord. And C, almost like a little chorus type. Now the weird part is to play along with R5, instead of starting on a C major chord, you're starting on an E major chord. So to play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and if you put the capo on 4th fret, then now your C is really an E major chord, and your F is really an A major chord, and your A minor is really a C sharp minor, and your G is really a B major chord. But to take it from the very beginning, you may want to work just that down idea, kind of working the two down hit, A minor, G, or you could fill in that time, C, with the downs, down ups, you're kind of digging on that idea. Or you can use the down, down, up, up, down, up, C, and A minor, G, or you may dig on the arpeggio idea. Kind of bringing up the chords different ways could be very cool for that part. And then from there, then we hit our first verse. So we have kind of our C. idea, which is kind of like our intro. So we got our C, F, A actually a lot of times with a song like this to make it more interesting I, I like adding bass notes to the chords so on the first down of your down down up up down up you can throw in a bass note for the chord so on the C you'd have the A for the bass on the F bar you'd have the low E for the bass on the F major 7 and then the major 13 you'd have the D string for the bass on the A minor you'd have the A for the bass and on the G you'd have the low E for the bass so on that band you may want to throw in uh, bass notes Try that with bases. We have the C, 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 the A bass, C, the A bass, A minor, the A bass, A bass, G, the Louis bass, G, the Louis bass, C, the A bass, C, the A bass, C, the A bass, C, the A bass, A minor, the A bass.
break again, actually, where we're kind of working that. And then from there, then we go into our chorus part. So we're back to our C, F, A minor, G. We're going to dig on that with the bass notes. Kind of C, F with D bass, A minor, A bass, G with the B bass. Or you can mix it up all kinds of things. C, F, A minor, G. C. We might dig on those arpeggios. Kind of bringing that individual idea back. We do that four times, then we kind of hit our, our chorus tag on the C. So we have C, F, A minor, G, C, F, A minor, G. Or if you know there are links around these chords too, you know, feel free to kind of take this lesson and run with it. That's the basics of how you could strum through rock that rock by R5. So good luck.